All right, first things first is we're taking the petals out. these two little spacers and then we're gonna take all these screws out so we got one right here one right there 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 and two in the middle There will be tape right here, and it makes it a little hard to get off, but it's gonna pop out, just go nice and slow. And there it goes, it pops. So then, we're going to have to take these uh, six screws out. Not very waterproof, there's huge puddles of water right here. And this side, same thing, we're taking the pedal out first. The next step is take the power cord, unplug it. And then push the power button to pull all the juice out to unload the capacitors. So and now it should be dead and you shouldn't have to worry about any weird sparks or anything bad happening. Um, next up is once again, take the cover off and we're gonna then take all these screws out and unplug the motor cables, the four pulse sensor motors and then the actual motor cable itself out of, where'd it go? That's right, this, this one right here. And then you're gonna unplug one, two, three. Make sure you mark what colors they are to go to which one. Do not forget what they are. Then you go back in the exact same order or you could mess up the control board. And you're gonna unplug this wire which is connected right there. I just gotta cut all the extra gunk away to make it come out. And then that will go through there and we slide the motor out. Okay, so you're gonna undo your wires, keep a track of the colors. So it's yellow, blue, green. So yellow on the left, blue. You have to pull back the insulation enough to see them. And then there's green. I just need to pull them out for the net. You gotta pull them out. Oh, there we go. And then make sure that these go through. I got the motor, you just watch those. Okay. No. Because of the way this motor is made now, if you were to run the wires out through the other hanger and flip your motor around, your hall sensor would be backwards. So, and so basically the motor would spin the wrong direction from what Gotway thought it was going to do and it will blow up. And you can't just switch some motor wires and get it right because the hall sensor will still be reversed. Okay. So just right on the actual hub somewhere you know, wires this side. Like on the inside mark. of the hub, you'll see that the hall sensor is on the far side from where the wires come out. So okay. you can always tell, but later you, when the covers are on, you won't, you won't be able see to see it. it. So you want to, right now, while the wires are out here, put on it, you know, uh, up, you put an arrow to up, and then uh, wires this side or something like that. I just make a flick on one side. Yeah, so you can put wire, uh, a wires, arrow, arrow coming yes. out, and then an arrow going up, just to, as a quick reference, so you'll know which side to put the uh, put the hanger facing. 
All right, the next step is we're gonna take these hanger screws out. That's a pretty big gap to add, you know? Okay, so I always, just to make sure that these holes all line up in case they didn't really, I always put a G near the Gotway symbol. And then this is the no wire side. I'm going to color the G in on the wire side. Oh, okay. You can also tell because I think they only put the motor code on the wire side. Here to get under this corner. Okay. They actually beveled the cover, so it's got a little angle in there. Okay. So yeah, take your thinnest ones first. Uh, like that one and this one, go straight across and just kind of twist, and then don't stick it very deep. Oh, okay. Just stay right on the edge, and as soon as you've got it up like that, then take two fatter ones again, straight across from each other, and do it very gentle. So if you go too too hard anywhere, you're going to cock it really hard on this fit. Okay. But if you're gentle and you just work a little bit at a time, then you should be able to get it to pop right off. Let go. To be able to get it to pop right off without too much of a fight. Yeah. Yeah. So then repeat on the other side and see how your hall sensor is on the side opposite of where the wires go. Okay. Okay, so to remove this bearing that is clunky and cracking and bad, we have this which fits through here, but not through the inner race of the bearing. And then we're just going to set that on a block of wood and get it up in the air. And then we're going to heat this while we spin it around or just heat around and around. And it'll let that uh, side cover housing, let it fall off. And you want to focus heat back and forth between this thick spot and the thin spot. And roll, rotate around. And try not to hit the actual bearing, although this doesn't matter in this case, it's a bad bearing anyway. And I'm moving fast enough that I know I'm not going to overheat any particular part of the aluminum. But slow enough to give it time to absorb some of the heat from the flame. So we're reheating it back up so we can drop the bearing right on in. Okay, so you need to heat up this area as well as the actual ring where the diameter is because if you just heat up the ring, then it can't grow because this will still be kind of constraining it. So you need to heat the whole thing up and, you know, more particularly that ring. But the whole thing it needs to end up the same ish temperature. And about 150, 160. Yeah, probably 160 would be about right. There you go. And that's in. Simple and easy. I feel like yeah. I'm recording with my phone. And we're not so hot that the paint starts to bubble or anything weird happens. And then we're going to re grease the inner. Yeah, you're gonna regrease this fit so that if you did have a bearing failure, it doesn't instantly wipe this out. Yeah, you just need a thin layer of grease. You don't want a lot. This 
This new motor design is so cool. Find our little G over there. This is all clean. We just want to double check that everything's clean before we put it back together. This is clean. And then find that little G. Okay, so the other thing about these that's kind of a bitch is once you pull a cover off, the stator cocks over really hard. Okay. And so you'll be able to get some of the bolts back in right away, but not all of them because it'll be pulled over to one side. So you get all the bolts kind of started, yeah. And do a crisscross and pattern. Let's pull this back off real quick and apply blue Loctite into all the threaded holes. That way you're not putting it on the bolts and adding Loctite in between the bolts. Oh, okay. You don't want any big globs going inside the motor and getting, you know. Oh! Oh no. Ah, okay, so then these bolts are still pretty small bolts. So when I go to torque them, I never let my finger come all the way out on the wrench. I just stay right here, about uh, a little over an inch off the side of the wrench. And then torque one, straight across, torque the next one, and go on a pattern. And once I get them all to that, you know, reasonably light torque, uh, then I'm gonna go around and tap for the hammer. and then retorque them, and then tap with a hammer again, and then retorque them. Then just keep doing that until you can't get any more movement out of the bolts. That means that you're sat down all the way flat, all the way around. Don't over tighten. Don't over tighten. They do not need to be that tight. They just need to 100% for sure suck this thing up tight and flat all the way around, but the Loctite is gonna keep them from backing off, so they don't need to be so tight that they can't loosen. The Loctite will take care of that. Tight Good. all the way around. If it's ever not tight, it'll make a weird slapping sound. Okay. But that sounded tight right away, so I think we're pretty much there. I'm just gonna do. You know, I am still getting a little bit more out of these. I'm not not torquing any harder. And I usually go all the way around in order one time just to make sure I didn't miss a bolt doing the pattern, because it is possible to just skip a bolt. Because There's the, so many. the pattern's kind of weird. Um, the other thing is, we just heated this. It's, you know, a good 160, 170 degrees. And you never cool it. Don't blow on it, don't put water on it, anything. Just let it air cool until it's cold enough for you to work with. Uh, if you try to cool it faster by any way, uh, there's a good chance you're gonna crack it. So just don't do it. Okay, so. These threads are really tight because of those thread inserts in the aluminum. Mm. So don't be alarmed. They're just tight, tight threads because they're helicoils. Stainless steel helicoils in the aluminum hub. Which is the highest quality thing they did on this motor. The thread inserts. So it feels bad, and that's why you don't want to take these bolts out with a power tool, just because that super tight thread. The helicoil is just like a spiral of yeah. steel, and if you come out too fast, you can actually pull that spiral out with you. Because it locks in. And it could stay stuck to the bolts. You really don't want to do that. So I snug everything up, and then before I go to full tight, I go hold it in the vise and level the pedals again. So oh, that's right. Pedals that are kicked out funny. Okay, so I'm holding on there. We're leveling out the hangers right now so they're even. Okay. 
and then I tighten all the bolts down now so that they're level. And they're level. This is what he uses to make it happen. <laughs>